Okay, I want to explain how I became a fan of Tito Santana and also um, how Tito Santana.net got, got created. Um, I started as a WWF fan, um, I think around March 1986, not exactly sure. I know it was early 1986. Um, I was watching uh, Saturday Night's main event, and it was uh, when King Kong Bundy, Don Morocco, and Bobby Heenan attacked Hulk Hogan, which led to WrestleMania 2. Um, yeah, probably a, a Macho Man Randy Savage took the Intercontinental title from Tato Santana. Probably that aired, and uh, you know, as upsetting that, as that <laughs> match is to remember. Um, I think it's probably, I can't uh, can concrete that, but it's probably the first time I saw Tito on TV. Um, it wasn't until I became a bigger fan of his uh, later, mid, mid to later 1987. Uh, first, it was the uh, WWF video they released, History of the Intercontinental Belt, uh, June of 87. It was just after Ricky Steamboat took the title at WrestleMania 3, they released that video. And they included all the entire, all the history of Pat Patterson, all with Ricky Steamboat, all the Intercontinental title changes. And I saw the uh, steel cage match. Uh, Tito Santana took the belt from Greg Valentine and regained it. And that is actually the first time I, I became an inspirational fan, I consider, I consider myself. Uh, because when he dropped from the wall of the cage and landed on the floor, he couldn't pick himself up. He was so exhausted. He was looking like he was doing push-ups. And he worked his ass off to get that belt back to defeat Valentine. And I always loved that match, that cage match. And I talked to Tito when I first talked to him. Um, it was... Uh, it still wasn't... A, it was an inspirational match. Still wasn't the big, still big Tito Santana fan yet. Uh, it was actually when uh, him and Rick Martel got together, became Strike Force in uh, September, October, '87, uh, and it's from there on when Strike Force had the tag team titles. And my wife's a huge Rick Martel fan, just like I am for Tito. Um, from there on. Um, Thing is, I felt the WWE really, uh, in a lack of a better word, lackluster. They didn't give him the attention, the desert, no, the recognition he deserved. And he was a worker. He uh, proved himself in the ring. Didn't have to fat, have flashy clothes. Didn't have to have you no know, the voice, uh, t a big talker, like a lot of guys do. But I love the Ariba, like anybody does. Um, but he's a, a, he's just really a good ring worker. Um, if he. If he did um, 15, 20, half an hour, if man hour, his his ring style's fantastic, and I his name is really it, it, at the top, the tip of your tongue, it rolls out Tito Santana. It's a cool name. Um, actually, in nineteen ninety three, when he when he he retired, I didn't even know about it. You learn more, you hear hard more about when Hogan left more than and Tito. They didn't give a big send-off like they recently just did Ric Flair, which I found upsetting that they didn't give uh, Tito Santana uh, a big send-off. And Tito explained that you know, the Al Matador gimmick didn't really work and, and you know, he felt you know, his wrestling career was falling miserably. Vince wasn't giving him, him enough. Yes, it was time to go, but I didn't even know it. He just disappeared. And it wasn't, you know, I was uh, also, also yeah, a huge ECW fan being a resident of Philadelphia for 12 years. Um, it wasn't until October 93 that I, uh, real, I found out through its history that he was ECW Heavyweight Champion. That was back in, uh, in August 93 at the ECW Arena. And I found, I found the, uh, a video of that, and it stunned me that he was uh, one of the first wrestlers to use the ECW Arena. And it was upsetting also that, yeah, he didn't like ECW, he ended up becoming hardcore, so he left it and left the title behind. And so, you know, they could have had him drop it, but he just... He once said it's not his cup of tea. Um, it what to his being his biggest fan is it? It's um, it's is, is uh, I saw a match recently, not recently, but a match with uh, Ric Flair. He had overseas. Um, I think it was in England. Um, he went to about twenty some minutes and proved him. Oh, um, he was a. Every, every wrestling fan has its favorite. Tio Santana is absolutely mine. And I have no I try to make a top ten list. Um, 
I've had many over the years. Many. I know many fans have had over the years. Dusty Rhodes, uh, <laughs> The Ultimate Warrior. I recently learned T doesn't like Ultimate Warrior. I was a fan of The Warrior. Dusty Rhodes, The Rock and Roll Express, The Road Warriors, um, The Undertaker. But Tito was cool. His name's cool. He has his ring. Oh, his. Um, Plus, his, uh, yeah, I, I think his football ability really was in the ring, too. I, I, you know, a lot of wrestlers use their football ability. Many have done it and over the years. And uh, he maybe he not maybe look at it the way I do. Yeah, he, do, um, he just... Um, my all-time favorite wrestler, what can I say? In the next video, you're going to learn the, the creation of TSN.net.